Family. Family. <laughs> family. How you got it. You got it. You know how to say yeah. it. No, I don't. I'm terrible at it. My family. <laughs> My family. <laughs> Shut up, Jeff. We've made it. Brian, sorry, Brian. Brian's family is going to be a little disappointed. Florida State uh, wins uh, in front of their family mm. uh, here 24 to 23 in the Superdome. Uh, the Seminoles snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Jaws of overtime, and then at least. Back, and then it, uh, really one of the craziest games uh, we've seen in a long time, but obviously also the biggest win in Mike Norvell's tenure. Florida State comes into this game as a slight underdog against an LSU team with a brand-new head coach and Brian Kelly. Had a lot of things going for him in terms of they had played a game, uh, third year of the program. Yeah. Brian Kelly starting a new program, first year. Uh, but we thought LSU had more talent. Florida State gets the win. But it, it there are so many twists and turns of this game that it's it's kind of hard to, to wrap it all up. I mean, I think Florida State was probably the better team on the night. But they also had to get a big break at the end. Yeah, they did. Uh, but it, was it a break or did you make your break? At least right. that's like, I, you know, um, I, I love that he got the kick blocked instead of just shanking it. You know, the, the Florida State did go make a play. That, that is something that matters. And Lord knows they practice special teams in this program more than any other program. For, so for the special teams to come up big like that with two blocked kicks, um, two – uh, two recovered muff punts that they didn't get any points out of, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, I, you know, I, that was just really good to see for Papuchas, for Norvell, because they do preach it, and they won the biggest game of his career. I think this is bigger than Miami. Um, I, I'll, I'll say it's bigger than Duquesne, Ira. I think I this mean, win was bigger than Duquesne. We'll let it s- settle in. We got to. I, yeah, so I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment. Right. Um, but, yeah, so, so to be on a national stage and, uh, on a Sunday night in New Orleans in the Superdome with a great crowd, with everybody watching, I was a, it was an entertaining game, and it's just such a great win because, yes, when you fumble at your the one-yard line going in to put the game away, and then you give up a 99-yard drive that scores on the final play of the game, that's some Florida State nonsense. That, you know what? Everybody, all of you were saying that. Of course, that's exactly what everyone was saying. So for them to go block a, a, the PAT was the most unexpected yeah. um, outcome. I mean, I would have thought maybe they block it and somehow LSU catches it and runs it in for two. <laughs> you know, something like that. But for them to win a game like that, just you hope and you think it could maybe be the spur of something bigger because they this program is desperately needed to win like this. We know LSU isn't great, but, man, that is still that still doesn't mean this can't be a great win. Yeah, I think you made the point in your column, which people can read at warchant.com. For still $1. just a buck. For $1. Still. That, buddy, rates are going up. <laughs> <laughs> Beat LSU one, rates are going up. It it's might be, be two do- bucks next week. It's going to be a right dollar now, a day. It's still a dollar. Um, but as you mentioned, look, man, don't don't stress about how close it, you know, it could have gone the other way because yeah. they did get the win, and that matters. The W matters. That, as you said, they made that play at the end. The other thing that really mattered is Jordan Travis looked as good as, I think, for the almost the entire game as Mike Norvell and Florida State's coaching staff has been saying he was going to look. And things we've seen at practice – but to see him do it on this stage, prime time, knowing the whole world's watching him, some of the hits he took from that yeah. LSU defensive front. That I one mean, that just speared him, I mean, like they, old school 80s style. It looked like they were trying to take him out of the game. Yeah. It looked like there was a conversation at halftime, hey, we got to get that kid out of the game because it should have been way more than 7-3. to yes. three. And sure enough, he takes the targeting hit but, but delivers the touchdown pass. Two touchdowns to Pokey Wilson. But Jordan Travis, I mean, I think we need to spend a little, a little time on Jordan Travis because – this was a huge night for him. Yeah, I thought he was the best player on the field. It's it, it, and it's really cool that he's he's turned into this. Like I don't think it's we don't have to couch it anymore. Qualified, he's a good college quarterback. He can uh, he is good enough to win a whole bunch of games. He just is. He's not he's not probably not going to lose you many, and he can win you a whole bunch. He he is uh, he's got some gifts, man. And he didn't even use his legs that much. I mean, he had one 23 yard run. And everything else was. Uh, you know, two or three yards here and there. Um, but he was yeah, money man, on third downs. He was great on third downs. He also had a couple of drops that were really well thrown balls. They looked like it looked like to me for touchdowns. Um, but man, if he's that guy, if he's you know he threw for two sixty. Um, if he's this guy that can throw for two sixty, because you're going to run for the better than that normally. I mean, LSU does have a pretty good defensive front. You didn't run on them like you're going to run on some other teams. If you can make plays like that through the air, so and they weren't third and ones either. Right. There were a lot of third and eights and third and tens. And Jordan Travis was completing those passes, making and making it look kind of easy. Right. There are a few that he's doing his dipsy doos and, and flipping it sideways, but a lot of it they just kind of looked like easy conversions. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, when it starts looking easy. That's when you know a quarterback might be onto something. He might have really gotten it. I, I just think you think about the kid that Brian Kelly saw last year in that game, even though they, he put up 28 points before he was out. 
and the game and the guy he saw today, he must be like, what in the world? Who is this kid? It didn't look anything. It didn't look to me anything like the kid that played um, last year. They also got a lot of other individual performances. Jared Verse. First game against first game on this stage. Yeah. Transfers in from Albany and FCS school last year. Comes in. We kind of cautioned everybody all off season. Don't expect Jermaine Johnson. Well, all he does in this game is has two sacks. He drew two had, holds. He also drew, drew two, two holds. holds and almost yeah. had a couple other sacks. He was frustrated after the game. And a block kick. And Jaden Daniels, man, that, I give that kid credit. He was tough to bring down. He he really gave LSU a chance in this game when Florida State's defensive front got way the best of that LSU offensive front. But Jared Verse. And uh, a couple other transfers, Micah Pittman, yeah. Johnny Wilson, up and down. Uh, but he had you a couple see of big catches. There. Johnny yeah. had a couple of big catches that just you weren't making last year. So did Pittman. Uh, there was a third down throw to him. It's like third and ten, a little six yard slant kind of play, and he makes a you know he he busted up in and gets twelve or fourteen yards, keeps the chains moving. Cam McDonald had a uh, I think he dropped that pass. I couldn't tell if the DB tipped it or not. It, was a, it might have been Jordan's best throw it looked of the like night. A great throw. It was a great. It looked like a great throw. Uh, I couldn't tell if he quite caught it or if it was tipped. But I thought Cam, you see what the element he can bring he's a nice first down maker um, for you and then yeah pokey uh, pokey again reminded everyone um, yeah I'm here too like right. I know you guys love your little shiny new transfers but I'm here too and I can make plays and he and Jordan do have a bit of a connection and have had one for two years now and it was awesome to see him make plays like that there were the, the second one in particular is just one of the better catches an FSU receiver has made in a long long time and it was cool about that again because you know he's a guy we talked about earlier with Maurice Smith you know when Florida State went out and got four transfer wide receivers in the spring, that wasn't a great sign of confidence to the returning wide receivers. Yes. But Pokey Wilson stayed here, and he just did what he did. I yeah. mean, he, they don't win that game without Pokey Wilson. Some of the new guys didn't make as many tough catches. Pokey Wilson does too. He, even the uh, he got interfered with on the first touchdown, the flea flicker. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, really impressive. Uh, you know, what you want to see from a guy who's been in the program five or six years as long as he's been here. Um, also defensively, I thought you saw some good moments from Tatum Bethune. Yeah. Uh, the defensive line, uh, you know, I, you, Jamie Robinson didn't have a ton of opportunities to make plays, and there was a bad series where he and uh, Akeem Demp had back-to-back penalties, which was, was really probably the only thing until the last eight or nine minutes that you had to be frustrated with with the defenses. All of LSU's points really came where – Maybe the defense made some mistakes. Yeah, and, I, and that was the what what I, I tweeted at, about it during the game is that the Akeem Dent play. You're up yeah. 17 to three. Um, he's he's just thrown a pass into the stands to make it third and ten, and you push him. There's no need to push him. It wasn't a violent hit. He wasn't trying to knock him out like LSU did to Jordan Travis was spearing. Um, he, they weren't trying to do that, but it was a, he didn't need to do it, and it was a free 15 yards. And then all of a sudden they get something going, and that's the stuff that Florida State has been doing forever. And you want them to get away from that, but on the same token. What Florida State doesn't ever really do or hasn't lately is they give up that score to cut it to 17 to 10, and then they immediately go right back down the field and make it 24 to 10. Those are the kind of answers you haven't had a lot uh, here recently. That's Jordan Travis. That's Norvell as a play caller, which I really like. I like him as a play caller up until about, I don't know, like a three to four <laughs> yard line. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not in love with what he's doing there. That obviously, um, we'll talk about it a little bit. You can't. In my opinion, it's not hindsight necessarily. I don't think you can call a pitch there in that spot. You just can't um, introduce any element of risk. You would have been better off downing the ball three times yes. and then kicking but the, not, the and my, I'm not for that because it's not like right. you got Aguayo back there. It's a 20-yarder. It's a chip any, shot. Any but, Aguayo. But any you know, of kicking Aguayo. Not even, yeah, not no. in their mom. Uh, you know, in, in any of the Aguayos. But I, I – but I, I, I don't mind you trying to score. I don't mind, yeah, mind you trying sure. to run it in. But don't introduce the element of a quick pitch because things can go wrong. Just a, a simple handoff. Uh, Jordan up the middle. DJ Lundy again. Right. Although I don't know. Are we gonna? We might get on to Mike if he gives the ball to DJ Lundy in that spot. And the linebacker that has one carry in his career fumbles. fumbles. Um, so it just. And also, you're allowed to catch a pitch. It wasn't. It wasn't at his ankles. He could have caught it. He didn't. All the things that went wrong. But I think, and I asked Mike and Norvell about, about that after the game. And watch all that on our uh, on our channel, which you're watching this on. You can see all the press conferences. I did ask him about that, um, and I, he said, "Well, I'm not going to tell you what he said. I want you to watch you the video. Watch you don't get you don't get that for free. Go watch the video." But it was enlightening. It was probably the the most enlightening thing anybody's ever said. So you need to go watch that press conference. The last thing I wanted to talk about was Mike Norvell mm. as a coach, because there are certainly things you can nitpick about this game. 100. percent uh, right before the halftime, going for it on fourth down. Not only going for it on fourth down, not getting the field goal, but throwing a fade to Micah Pittman. Right. Maybe you could use your personnel a little bit better. Again, you got the some decision six, making guys. you don't mind as right. much as why why are you throwing it to him? Like right. why are you throwing it to the five eight kid? You, I don't mind him going he's not for five, it there. Eight, but he's not, well, but he's but not he's six not, seven or six four either. Yeah. Right. So uh, what is he? Five ten? Somewhere in five eleven maybe. All right. So your height? 
Yeah. All right. Nice. But he's a little more athletic. A little. By, by a smidge. It's <laughs> close. By a smidge. Um, but that decision wasn't great. Obviously, the pitch at the end was not and a you great. you mean decision to throw a fade, yeah, not the decision throw, exactly. to go for it. That's yeah. what I meant. Like, going for it, I, I, I don't mind yeah. it because, in my opinion, you're kind of on house money anyway. They've just given you the ball at the right. 10. Going up and making it. 14 Although, to 3 is such a bigger deal than 10 to it 3. Is, it is, but you are going to get the ball to start the third quarter, too. Yes, so correct. you have a chance to be up 17 3 if you get the ball out. And they did. Matt Florida State got the ball, started the third quarter. Those drives, I mean, how many 10, 12, 15 play drives the Florida State's offense have, yeah. again, against a, a good defense? Time swallowing drives, too, like seven minute drives. So there were some mistakes, though, but I also think, again, you got to talk about where Florida State, from the big picture standpoint, look at where Florida State was two years ago, where they were not competitive against any decent team. Well, remember, like they, they stayed with it against Notre Dame in that game two years ago up there, but Notre Dame could have run for 900 yards if they wanted to in that game. Remember those holes that there? It was Steven Dix and DJ Lundy were your linebackers in that game. That's who Brian Kelly saw two years ago. And then last year he saw Jordan Travis that wasn't this. Now Brian Kelly saw a fully formed almost Jordan Travis. And he, I would be interested like what he thinks of Mike Norvell and the program he's built. Because nobody has quite the, uh, he's had a really interesting perspective, uh, interesting perspective these, these last three years. Well, we're going to wrap it up here for the Superdome. Florida State wins it 24-23. Well, I also wanted to say, though, if they kick the field goal to go up 10-3, to then uh, then it doesn't come down to that last play. You're up you're right. up by ten points in the last minute, and then it doesn't come down to them scoring and uh, and all that fun yeah. that happened. And oh, a so of, we, we a little been, bit of this. <laughs> we would have been deprived. Haslon didn't even of, see it. I can't wait till you see that. Of, <laughs> there to Jeff. Of, He's not even looking. Well, look. I wish I hadn't seen it. Look, I'm the only I'm one sorry. to pay the price here. Look, Jeff's just sitting there. He's he didn't even see it either. Well, look. Everybody was wanting me to. They did. wanted me to pump, pour gumbo on myself. Uh, flash so I could get beads. So we didn't have any props, so I had to do a little dance. So it felt good, though. It was a dance. It? it was a dance. Well, the dance felt great. It always <laughs> does. But just the win itself felt so good. All right. Why don't you uh, wrap us up? 